Hi, this is Guru Prasad. Today, I'm just going to show you how to use WordPress with Microsoft SQL Server. This is going to be quite interesting and quite similar to the legacy MySQL setup. And you are going to experience the power of open source blogging with SQL Server 2008. Now let's move to the prerequisites. All you need to have is the Internet Information Services, the web server that is IIS 7 or above, and a PHP compatible compiler version 5.2 or, or above, and a SQL Server Express Edition 2008 with SQL Server Management Tools or any other edition, say standard or web or enterprise edition. Then comes the PHP driver for SQL Server version 1.1 and the tools. You can download this from Microsoft's website. And when you want to customize the, fu the functionality of displaying the blog URLs, you need the URL rewrite 2.0 module. Let's look at it later. Then comes the question, oh, how do I get these products? It's quite simple. All you need to do is just install the Microsoft Web Installer platform from microsoft.com slash web. When you log on to the microsoft.com slash web, you will find the platform tab. Just click on it and you will be able to download the Microsoft Standard Platform Installer. Just do a single click on it and the download continues. Once you install the Microsoft Web Platform Installer, just click on the Start button and type web and click on Microsoft Platform Installer and the Platform Installer loads a list of products, applications and Spotlight and you gotta click on products and search for PHP driver for SQL Server and hit enter. You will get the two versions of Microsoft's SQL Server driver. Choose which one is opt for you or say uh, in my case I would choose version 2.0 for PHP version 5.2 and hit add and click on install. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch my Internet Information Services from start. Internet Information. Here we go. I just click on this. The Internet Information Services launches. So, I just quickly add a website to it. Just name it with WordPress with SQL. And I have created a folder already that matches with this name and it's not mandatory that you got you got to follow with the same name and mount this website with any IP address that you own and suggest a host name and hit OK so the website comes here what you do just do a right click and click on manage website and click on restart so the website gets restarted So now, what we're going to do is, we are just going to download a fresh copy of WordPress from WordPress.org. Okay, here we go. Okay, save. So what we do is, once we download the WordPress 3.3.1 package, we 
we are just going to extract the folder and going to drop it where we have mounted the folder to the IIS. So it means you're going to deploy the package, the WordPress package, to your hosting area. So this is similar to the one how you host your websites on a shared hosting. So it just takes a few seconds to extract and we are done. Okay, here we have a bunch of files. So what we're going to do is we are just quickly going to copy and going to navigate to to the folder that we had created and going to paste it over there. Okay, we are done. Now, the foremost important stuff what we're going to require to configure the WordPress for SQL Server is the WordPress data abstraction. It's a package which has been built by a custom that is, it has been built customly for, for the users to run their websites uh, with SQL Server. So I will share the URL where you need to download the package. Now what we're going to do is, we are just going to download the package and extract it and copy the wp-db-abstraction.php to, to the folder. To the folder where we have deployed, I'm going to place it into the root folder, that is, the root folder of the website. Here we go. Here you see the web page, wp-abstraction.php. Good. Then, the second step would be to copy the wp-abstraction folder to to the folder named wp-content. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you are just going to copy this db.php file to the root of your website just in case if your database tries to pull up the file from the root directory, you might need this file. Okay, we are done with. So what are we going to do next? Our next step would be creating a database, an empty database. So we are going to we're going to install the SQL server on the machine. You can download it from the Microsoft's website. It is available free of cost. Here we go. So I'm going to type here SQL Server 2008 Express, which is the free edition. Okay, I got it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select my version of the, uh, I mean, the exact version which I need. So be sure that the edition you're going to install is based on the operating system's version. That is, whether it is x86 that is a 32-bit or x64, a 64-bit edition. So in, in my case, my operating system is a 32-bit machine. So I'm just going to hit the download button and going to start download. Okay, here we go. Now, 
I have installed the SQL Server for my computer and I have launched the SQL Server Management Studio. So it is configuring for the first time to help us to have a stable database system. It just takes a minute or two to configure on its own and gets us the UI, the user interface. So I'm just going to key in my credentials over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new database. Oh. Here we go. Just going to type something over here for my database. Say WordPress for SQL and hit OK. So my database gets listed over here. Just going to copy the database name, OK, and just going to minimize it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly launch the website that we have hosted. And I'm going to navigate to the readme.html or you can navigate to index.php. Both the methods work. Okay, when, when I hit the index.php, that is the default file of this package, I get a page over here and an option to create a configuration file. Just I just hit the create configuration file and going to move with it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to write the database name that I've created. Okay. And username. And this would be for the database connection details. So I'm going to type the uh, username for my, that is the SA system admin username for my uh, SQL Server database. I'm going to type the password here. I'm going to type the database host here. That is Kriprasad PC. And if you want, you can change your prefix after a database tables. OK, here we go. So before processing or before executing, we just need to make sure that we have created a folder name mu-plugins and have dropped the wp-db-abstraction folder in it. And this is the file that we are going to need right now to uh, install or set up our WordPress for a SQL server. That is setup-config.php. That is my URL would be slash wp content slash mu dash plugins dash wp dash db abstraction set up to slash config dot php. So I'm just going to run this URL quickly. And this will bring up my installation page. So just going to quickly fill up the database name that we created and my username for the SQL Server database. And I'm just going to select the, the type, which type of database that I'm going to use to install my WordPress. So I'm just going to select it and going to type in my root password and the server name and I'm not going to touch this part that is I'm not going to change the table prefix so I'm, I'm just going to leave it just to have it wp underscore and there we go
This is the screen which is presented in front of you to run the WordPress installation. And once you hit this, just type the site title, say a sample site, and the username admin, and the password, let it be admin. And my email address, test at gmail.com. Hooray! There we go. So all I got to do is I just got to enter my username and password and a fresh copy of the site is presented in front of you. Here it is. And that's all from me. And if you want to connect with me, you can contact me on my Facebook at facebook.com slash groupers.dubology or tweet me at twitter.com slash gp underscore me. Thank you for watching my presentation. Have a great day. Bye-bye.